Hey, welcome back to Tripod's Garage. I appreciate you taking time of your day to watch my channel. If you could please subscribe and hit that little bell notification, that will help me a great deal. And you also won't miss out any of my future videos. Um, today we're going to continue on, as you see in the title, of soldering part two. We're going to do what's called through hole soldering. So it's basically a part that goes through the, uh, the PCB, the printed circuit board, and it gets soldered from underneath. Uh, we're going to look at some examples of, uh, uh, you know, parts that have been through a manufacturing process. I have uh, two examples. I'm going to tear apart uh, this little battery charger. Um, I really don't have much in my house. I, I e-cycle a lot. So I try not to keep, um, <laughs> being in the IT industry, we are kind of hoarders. So you don't really want to be holding on to electronics that don't matter anymore. So, um, but we're gonna take apart this little travel charger. Hopefully there'll be something in here that we can look at. Um, and I also have a, um, from, <laughs> from my 3D Creality uh, Ender 5 Plus, the bad power supply. That's in a previous video of mine, where I replaced the bad power supply this is uh, the one that came with it. This is a prime example of through hole soldering. All these pieces on here are through hole. So that means that, sorry about the camera, it's auto focusing. I got a new camera. I need to get a wireless mic for it. Otherwise you, you will hear that in and out as it's focusing on me. And so anyways, I'm uh, sorry about the interruption. This, uh, so these, you know, capacitors are placed on here, let's just go through a manufacturing process, right? A lot of these are hand placed on these. You know, you can tell by the size of it that machine isn't gonna place these parts. So there's a lot of manual steps that are involved to get all these in the right spot. So a person or maybe a machine will put these parts on as so, so it's going through a conveyor belt and it goes into a, what's called a solder wave machine. A solder wave machine, you know, put an example video, I'll find one online or something that I can put, put in the comments or maybe I'll just show it, is um, it has a pump and it just basically, it's like, uh, how can I say it? a fondue pot, right? Or something. You just picture um, your favorite uh, chocolate just coming right out and oozing out. It looks so good and tasty, but this isn't tasty. It's a hot, molted solder. So, as this circuit board now is traveling through this solder wave machine, the bottom gets sprayed first with a flux as it's heating up and getting ready to go over the molted solder. As it goes over the molted solder, barely skims the bottom of the board. And that's actually what, how it's soldering everything. You know, I'll put this under the microscope, but you can tell on this board, that it was done by a wave machine as well as by hand. There's lots of junctions on here and everything where I, th this is just so poorly built, but it actually has some really good example of good solder joints as well. So we'll uh, now continue on and uh, go through the process. I have a little solder kit that we're going to be using as a demonstration. I, I found this on Amazon and uh, you'll have to see what it is after it's built. But we're going to be using um, my little microscope here, as well as I got this new camera. It's a 200D Canon. Um, it's an SLR, also known here in the States. It's called a SL2. I'm hoping that it brings a little bit better um, videography to my channel. So I'll get that wireless mic on there soon enough. All right, let's get going. We're going to take a look at this uh, piece of garbage power supply that came with my Creality Ender 5 Plus. Also going to take apart this battery charger. Might be some parts we can take a look at, see how it's soldered on. Doubt we're going to be using those helping hands or tweezers. Here's this, the kit that we're going to be putting together. And here's my wife's toothbrush. Don't tell her, but we'll put it back once we're done with it. There's a microscope that we're going to be using so you can see the close-up soldering. Some various solder tips. We'll see which one we need. And here is this, the ground strap hooked up to the mat right into my solder station some snippers, some solder, and we got the ice mountain water so I could put on that sponge. Here's the tablet where the microscope's hooked up to. It's always kind of fun to play with. It's not the best microscope. I may have to look for a different one. Um, it's, uh, you'll see, I'm gonna have a little bit of problems with it. And let's pan out here and take a look at the whole setup.
first we're going to just take apart this uh, little battery charger for AA batteries. Um, it's not what I expected. It has a lot of surface mount parts on here, only a few through hole parts, uh, basically where, where these red LEDs are. Um, but there you can see as I zoom in on here, there is a few top solder joints here. They're kind of like balls. You can see them right, right there. And not what I was really expecting. We will be most likely just moving on to the garbage power supply that came with my Ender 5 Plus. And uh, believe it or not, that was most likely done in a wave machine, as well as a lot of hand soldering. So let's move on to that instead. All right, here is the power supply that came with my Creality Ender 5 Plus 3D printer. It is real piece of garbage. <laughs> I replaced it with a mean well. Uh, I have it in my previous video on do not buy a 3D printer until you watch this. There's some actually some good soldering on here. I believe this was gone through a wave machine because these traces are, look really good. But you do have some really weird like balls like right here. This one, uh, depending on what it is, maybe that's the way it should be. You got this long jumper wire that's definitely done by hand. And uh, I just wouldn't trust anything that had that. Here's another ball. Um, it, if this was inspected, this stuff should not have passed. Um, and there's another one right here, too. It's, you know, there's some good and some bad on here. You know, you can decide which is which. But I wouldn't even trust all these soldered traces to begin with. This is why I replaced it. it you know, look at all that soldered traces on the bottom. It should be just solid metal. All right, let's move on. I mentioned before, my mat is grounded to the solder station. However, you could also use a wrist strap. It doesn't need to just go to this mat. You could just use a grounded wrist strap, and it works just as good. Ah, good old Midwest bottled water, Ice Mountain. I have a few sips, nice and refreshing. And now we're going to just put some water right on my sponge. Again, if you watched my previous video on soldering wires, you just want this sponge damp. You don't want it soaking wet. All you are is just brushing off your, your tip. And then that's it. Give it a little dab, make sure it's not soaking wet. And let's open up this kit. This is basically a kit that you can find on I got it on Amazon. That's most likely what you would put to put together in like your middle school or high school electronics class. Nothing special. This is just a a digital clock. Um, it's it's a multifunction electronic clock seat. And we just go through all this and see a schematic on the back with a basically a bill of materials, parts list, whatever you want to call it on the bottom. And, uh, yeah, I think I got everything here. I trust them. And we get a nice little thank you card. Well, thank you, too, for giving me all this to put together. As we take a look at this uh, circuit board, don't expect the best of quality. This thing only costs about 12 bucks. But the only thing that's kind of alarming to me is when I flip it over, these pads are really small and close together. So that means I got to use a small tip on it. Not the ideal situation I was looking for. So that means less uh, um, thermal energy being applied to the pad and the part at the same time. So let's just move some stuff out of the way here. Here's a, a socket for this chip here. Typically you're always going to use a socket and you're going to push this chip right inside of it. It's um, got a little key on the top telling you which direction it goes. Well, we'll just put it back in the foam so none of these pins get bent. But that's about it for here. I mean, I'm just going to separate these parts a little bit and get it organized. And then we'll move on to getting some soldering done. So we're going to pick out the tip that we're going to use for this uh, circuit board here. I'm not a fan of this circuit board for just a couple reasons. The pads are small. And the through hole parts have really small leads. So that just leads me to the, using what's called a conical tip. It's the smallest tip that I have in my collection here. And 
most likely for a lot of these parts, I'm going to have to put a little bit of solder on my tip to promote heat flow before I start soldering. Uh, uh, lining up that yeah, this is the correct tip for the job because you could uh, do what's called bridging when the solder goes from one pad to another. And when you use a screwdriver tip or something like that, it's not the best scenario. So I'd rather go with a little bit smaller of a tip for the job. Replacing the tips are rather easy. Just unscrew, take one off, and then put one on and put the sleeve back on. Got these tips from Amazon. Luckily, they fit my solder station. It's been out of uh, production for at least 10 years now. Um, luckily, it was uh, uh, pretty universal. Easy to find these tips. I find it a good practice to wipe down your circuit board before soldering with like isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you don't know if uh, the manufacturer put like any type of oil or anti-corrosive uh, oil of some sorts on it and plus you know you just want to remove any contaminants it makes it for a good adhesion and uh, when you handle these circuit boards you want to try not to put any of your fingers on the pads handle it by the edges here's an example of how thin these leads are it's it's kind of ridiculous for how big the holes are but i'll make do what i've done here is i've already just pushed in all these transistors to get ready for soldering and uh, same with the LEDs. This is a pretty simple board. Um, the transistor, the markings are the same on the board. Um, with these transistors, I don't have to bend the leads. The three leads that are coming out just kind of like friction set themselves in. And as we turn it over, you can, uh, let me get this focused. You can see that all these leads are sticking out and we're just going to solder each one. Um, and they're a little bit thicker, so this will be a nice flow of solder onto the pad. You will see that some of them are a little bit off-center, but and that's just the way it is. Let's get to soldering. Here I actually am um, going to push it against the side of the part in the pad and feed it from behind. And you can see I get into a nice little rhythm here, just one right after another. You'll build confidence as you start to solder. This is a perfect solder flow that you're seeing right here. You don't want too much where it becomes a ball. You just want it to kind of just like suck up along the um, lead and adhere to the pad. Sometimes you'll need to promote the heat by hitting the tip of the soldering iron first. It's okay. As you can see, I'm doing that a couple times here. And it just works. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful solder flow right now. Well, you'll see that in, later on that I'm going to have a little bit of difficulty with some of the thinner leads because it's just you're filling in a big gap from the pad to the lead. Here I'm putting in the resistors. This has the th thinnest leads of all the parts I'm putting on. That means that the through hole part has a, needs a lot more solder to fix it to the PCB. I like to have all my parts lined up nice and neatly. You know, it's just part of my process. So all the values, the colors on each of these resistors, I want to have them all in the same direction. Um, you'll see coming up here, um, this is the orientation I'm going to do for all of them. These are all the same. All right, here's the underneath of all the, and the front. As you can see, they're all in the same orientation, just the way I like it. Let's carry on. As I mentioned earlier, these are really thin leads. And when you have a thin lead like this and a bigger hole, you have to fill it up with solder. And that leads to either be a solder ball or excessive solder or not enough solder. So I practiced a few and I think I honed it down to the technique I'm going to use. Uh, you'll see on this first one here, I go ahead and apply the solder like I normally do. And there's a little bit of a divot that I'm not happy with. I'll come back and fix that later. 
when you have extra solder on there, I developed this little technique where you flick it up a little bit on the lead itself. So you'll see I kind of flick it up because I know that I'm applying a little bit too much solder. I'm still homing in how I want to solder these leads. I just want to make sure I do not do a ball. Cosmetically, I just want it to look good. That one was a really good one. And we're just going to touch up a little bit here and there. Um, but otherwise, all the resistors are done. Let me touch up that bottom one right now and that top one. There you go. And it's called reflowing when you uh, touch it up and just make it look better. Here we're going to install the socket. This is going to most likely be a really good solder joint. The reason why is that these leads are thicker and it really fits into the circuit board a lot better than almost any parts that are on here, except for the LED uh, you know, numbers that we're going to put on later. Issue with this, these bigger parts that they don't stand by friction and the leads are too small to bend to keep it in place. So what do you do? Well, there's a couple things you do. do. Like what I'm doing here is I'm trying to put it on some tweezers, keep the part flat, but it really looks like it's not working out for me. The next thing you can do is solder one of these leads down. It doesn't matter if the part's crooked or not. You solder one of these leads down and then you pick it up and as your, your solder on the pad, you could then push the part down and then release the soldering iron. Now it's locked into place. You'll see the technique right here. I'm gonna just solder a little bit on this pad here. And then I gotta pick up the board and I'm going to place the solder, soldering iron back on the board get to it there we go and then I'm gonna just place it on there and then I'm gonna push the part in that's it now it's locked into place and I can start soldering the rest of the leads now that we have one end done we're gonna do the other end we're gonna just add a little bit of solder to this lead and then we're gonna pick up the part we're gonna push on a little bit as we're pushing it we're gonna apply the, so the siren iron back to the part push it there we go. That part is now not going anywhere. Now we can have to start have some fun and get into a rhythm and get this part soldered correctly. Just like with the resistors, it takes a little bit of practice to see how the part is going to work with the solder, but once you do, you can get a really good flow going. Here is an example when I do this next row, uh, how when you get it your uh, homed in your skills, so to speak, how fast you can get these solder joints soldered. You know, you want to also uh, wipe down your tip periodically when you start to see um, basically charring on the end. Uh, basically, it's uh, all the flux. So here you go. You can see that I get into a good rhythm here. Boom, boom. Boom. This is, once you get into that type of rhythm, it's uh, pretty hard to stop because you're like, oh man, I already did this row. Uh, okay, what's the next one? Here we're doing another row of resistors. These small leads, man, I'm telling you. You're filling it up. It doesn't look like a big hole, but you're filling it up. And I really like to have that perfect concave uh, um, solder joint in here. And I really should have turned this board around to get a better angle. This is why you're seeing the difficult time I'm having with these. I'm doing the same technique, kind of flicking it up here if I think I have too much solder on here. Um, that one's a little bit too much, but as you see, I reflow it and it comes out pretty much perfect. We're going to just go ahead and get the rest of these done here. Uh, if you see that you have a little bit of a kink in your solder, straighten it out like I'm doing it here. It's just going to lead to a bad solder joint. Let's uh, go ahead and let this play through and see how it turns out.
after I'm done soldering this one joint, I'm going to do what's called tinning the tip out of your soldering iron. What this is, is uh, you apply solder on the tip of your soldering iron if you know you're not going to be using it for a while, but you still want it to keep it heated. It prolongs the life of your tips. I've been using that same tip on the soldering iron for 15 years, and it still works great. Next, I'm putting in these, uh, these LED numbers. Um, these are a really good fit for this PCB. I mean, the, the leads are a lot more stout on these, and it should make it for a lot nicer experience for soldering and um, showing a proper technique on how to get this done. Right now I'm going to do the same technique as I did before with the socket. I'm just going to apply that one pad on each of these three. And I'm going to then pick up the board and I'm going to apply heat to one of those leads while pushing down on the part at the same time. And you'll then feel it get nice and snug to the PCB and it's it boxed it in place. It's a pretty easy process. So this way your parts don't look like they're out of level. It looks like a nice professional job. Just like resistors and the other parts, you start homing in your skills on how to get this done. These are ideal. The, the through hole parts are perfect size for the pads for this PCB. It, I get into a rhythm really quickly with these. Uh, it makes it so much easier when you have the correct size uh, leads coming out to the PCB uh, pads. You see here, it's applying heat to the top and pushing the solder from underneath. So proper technique each time instead of having to finagle with the thin lead wires. And again, you're going to want to uh, clean off your solder tip once in a while as you start to see the um, flux on there. Um, and uh, we're going to just do this last set here and then we'll do a nice a zoom in view so you can see how nice these parts are really coming out. Here's a close-up of the same leads, and you'll see how pretty these solder joints come out. You know, it's, to me it's all about how it looks, you know, it's just the way I am. Perfect amount of solder, you got that nice beveled edge, uh, it's, like I said, it's, it's beautiful. Now that we're done with the whole board, you can use this cleaner, it's a flux cleaner. It has a built-in brush and we're going to get rid of all the flux that's around these parts. You can just spray it and it has a built-in brush and you can clean the whole board with it. Um, you know, you could also use your wife's toothbrush and uh, the, oh, the rubbing alcohol. Uh, this purple alcohol works too. Uh, it doesn't clean it as well as this, but still that's almost the same results. And here's the finished product underneath. I believe it came out pretty well here. Um, it pretty much looks like it came off the factory floor. That's basically what you're looking for, a nice clean solder job. And then we switch to the top here. 
all the parts are nicely lined up. Um, honestly, I would think that this came off a factory environment, and that's what we're trying to do. Show that through hole solder can look really good and have professional results at home. All right, so I, ho I hope you learned something. This uh, concludes part two of how to solder a PCB printed circuit board. Um, and people say PCB board, you know, it's just PCB. You know, they don't say the last part twice, the PCB board. You know, I, I never got that, but PCB. So, um, I hopefully some of these techniques that I've showed to you today um, will help you along. I know that it's uh, you know it could be a you know daunting for someone to pick up a siren iron and do something like this, but uh, as you see, I got a, a nice little analog clock here. Reminds me of uh, going back to electronics in in school. So, but it was fun. And I like, you know, I, I'm very meticulous. I like everything lining up. I even know the resistors are no, not pull, have no polarity to them. I'm all facing the same uh, direction. And so I'm and making sure that even the transistors just are nice and as, you know, symmetrical as possible. But um, I think that will conclude this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And if uh, you have any questions, please feel free to uh, comment below. Um, but I am open to suggestions on what the next video for soldering you want to see. I will try to tackle anything that you put in the comments within reason. So just let me know. Please like, subscribe, and again, thank you for watching.